Welcome to Never Again is Now, a podcast about anti-Semitism. We are ending the year with an episode about anti-Semitism in high school and discussing this with a remarkable high school student who speaks up against it. I'm Evelyn Marcus, and in addition to being a psychologist, I'm featured in the documentary about anti-Semitism, Never Again is Now. I am a Dutch Jew and the daughter of Holocaust survivors. In 2006, I emigrated to the United States because of the rising anti-Semitism in Europe. I am Phyllis Zimbler Miller. I am the founder of the free nonfiction Holocaust theater project, thinedgeofthewedge.com. I grew up in Elgin, Illinois, outside Chicago, very small Jewish community in which our grandparents had come at the turn of the 20th century to escape the czar. So it was not a place where the Holocaust was discussed. And yet, 25 years later, in September 1970, my U.S. Army officer husband and I found ourselves stationed in Munich, Germany, and this changed our lives forever. Joey Carlin is a senior at Palisades Charter High School in Pacific Palisades, California. He already has started his career in computer science. Joey is the co-president of the Jewish Student Union, student union in his high school, and of the Pali High Students Supporting Israel. And he is a team leadership fellow and council member at the pro-Israel organization Stand With Us and Club Z. Joey also participates in the C Teen Leadership Program that explores the deeper spiritual aspects of the tradition of Jewish identity. And he's part of the friendship circle where he meets with peers who have special needs. We are thrilled to have Joey Carlin, a true light within our nation, on our show at the last this last episode of the year. Joey, welcome. Yes. Thank welcome. you. And I get to ask the first question, which is you're very active in your advocacy for Israel and fighting anti-Semitism. Is there something in your personal background that motivates you to do this? Yes. Uh, so for, for sure, in my own background, um, in my own family, even, um, in, in my father's father, just in the 1940s, when he was in America trying to enter medical school, he had to change his last name to a less Jewish sounding last name in order to bypass the anti-Jewish quotas for Jewish students' um, acceptance. So this is a story that was told to me since I was a really little kid, and it showed to me that there's anti-Semitism is real and there's no way to get around it. And in my own philosophy, I think that, you know, as a Jew, I'm a Jew, and I think that all Jews must stand up. Hillel said, if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? And as a Jew, I believe that I have an obligation to fight anti-Semitism for myself, for my family, for my community, and for the Jewish people. Um, uh, um, unfortunately, so I've seen even things that that um, have influenced my activism. Um, I've seen of course, terror attacks throughout the world and anti-Jewish attacks. But one that particularly resonated with me was in Los Angeles, just about over a year ago, when um, a Jewish young young man and uh, his non-Jewish friend were dining at a restaurant when a group of young Jewish men came up um, and- Non-Jewish men. Excuse me, non-Jewish men came up holding large Palestinian flags. And they said, is anyone Jewish here? And this, other young Jewish guy said, yes, I'm a Jew. And subsequently the group beat him up along with his non-Jewish friend. They beat him up for being a Jew and they beat up his friend for associating with a Jew. This is something that really showed me that even though I'm in Los Angeles, which, which is a city with thousands of Jews and in America, um, the freest country in the world, anti-Semitism is still a real problem. And you know, we say never again, but what does that mean if we don't take action? So for me, all of these combined and it makes me who I am, and it makes me want to and feel that I have a need to fight anti-Semitism. I, have I, you? Yes, yeah, sir. I just want to. I want to give someone credit. I just was thinking when Joy talked about it, and he may even be too young to know this, but when Daniel Pearl, a journalist for the Wall Street Journal, was executed by. Um, I don't know what the right word is. I'm not sure they were Palestinians or from a particular country. But just before his head was cut off, he said something to the effect of, I'm a Jew, my father is a Jew. And, and those of us who followed this news story, 
and his father Judah Pearl has then become very active in uh, causes for Israel. Standing up, that young man on the street in line, it was just near here in Los, I was gonna say the street La Cienega, in Los Angeles was very courageous to stand up, but we need to be courageous is what I'm saying. So I'm glad that he, that recent news inspired you because this old news story, Daniel Pearl is probably before your time. Mm -hmm. Joey, have you personally experienced anti-Semitism or Israel hate in high school? Uh, yes, so I have, and unfortunately my peers more, but I'll talk about myself first. Yeah. So one time when I was um, entering school in the morning, I sat at my desk and I realized, I noticed there was a swastika carved in pretty deep into the table. Um, I don't know who put it there. I don't know if they knew it was my desk or not, but certainly it was a surprise and a shock to me uh, to see such a terrible and disgusting symbol in my desk. And swastikas um, at my school are not uncommon. There have been numerous incidents of um, of students graffitiing giant uh, spray painted swastikas throughout the school and outside. And, and um, these acts of hatred are such a terrible thing, I think for myself also, because um, again, I mean, it's the school where I go to, and yet there's giant symbols of anti-Jewish hatred. It's something that I think should not be tolerated. And that really affected me. Um, furthermore, there have been, there was another incident where a teacher was running a program for uh, different marginalized student groups, for instance, the black students, Latino students, uh, gay students, and, and, and others. And a Jewish student asked, can Jewish students be involved in this program? And this teacher said, no, Jews are not a discriminated against uh, group in any sense. And I and a bunch of student leaders thought that this was unacceptable and we took action against this teacher. And I'm sure um, I'll talk a bit more about that. And also, um, as president of the Student Supporting Israel Club, we hand out materials at, on my campus in high school. And these materials show little, you know, um, um, informational packets about um, Jewish history and about Israel and Zionism. And there was an incident where a few students took these materials and pretended to burn them with lighters, something like that. And also they've taken little materials that say, I love Israel, et cetera, and taken videos of them smashing and destroying these these um, little pins and, and symbols of Jewish identity. And I feel that those are personal attacks onto me and onto the work that I'm doing at my school as well. Yeah, so the, um, the, we're talking about high school and, and to have so many examples of, um, of Israel hate and Jew hatred um, is a bit shocking uh, actually to me. Um, what, do you have any idea who put those those swastikas out there in school? Um, I don't have much of a, an idea. I believe that there is an investigation done with the police department, but I don't really know. I don't have an answer for that. No. I, I have a question about this. I've been thinking about this for uh, my play project. If they're just put up and there's an investigation, does, does the school have the responsibility, which I think they do, of then educating students? I have a theory that for many students in high school, they just know that soatsukas are naughty or something and have no idea what the history behind it is and what it means to someone who's Jewish to see it. So did your school then take the next step and, and literally explain what this symbol means? It's not just something to graffiti. Yeah. Um... You know, that is actually something that we're pushing for, but unfortunately they did not take those steps to educate their students and faculty about what exactly the swastika is and the history of, of the Holocaust and Jew hatred. Um, and something else that I want to add also is that when uh, in one particular incident of swastikas being graffitied on the campus, I was not, um, I was sick or something. I was on campus when it happened. And when I returned, I asked someone, I asked a peer of mine, um, is that where the swa is, is that where the graffiti was? And they go, yeah, that's where the swast. That's the swa they, they they couldn't pronounce swastika. They didn't know the word really. They didn't really even know what it was. So it just shows that the students they they need the education on what this is, and the school is not providing it to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you heard from other students, other uh, uh, even other um, examples of anti-Semitism or uh, Israel hate? Yes. At so, your school? 
Yes, yes. At my school, unfortunately, there are um, many students, Jewish students, who experience anti-Semitism. Uh, one, one notable story was there were two girls who got into some sort of a uh, altercation. One of them was Jewish, one was not. And in the middle, the non-Jewish student, the non-Jewish girl said to the Jewish girl, you're dripping from Israel. And the Jewish girl said, what does that mean, dripping from Israel? And the non-Jewish girl responded. She said, it means you're a dirty Jew. And I heard this story from, from the Jewish girl that it happened to, and I was just in complete shock. As you can imagine, I would not even expect something like this to happen on a college campus. This seems like something from 1930s Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, again, really pushed me to have to do, to, to, to want to do something about it. And also there are teachers who, in their curriculums, um, they will deny Israel's right to exist. They will perpetuate the lies of apartheid um, and blood libel. And when Jewish Wait, students- try to at, your school, at your school? Yes, at my school. I, I don't want to say it happens so often, but I've definitely heard about it from Jewish students who try to speak um, pro-Israel and they get shut down by their teachers. Um, there are also, yes. No, go ahead, go ahead. There's also a teacher who recently, when Kanye West came out, praising Hitler, you know, how, how terrible that was. A teacher said to a Jewish student, Kanye was right. Um, thankfully, actually, that student stood up to the teacher and the teacher later apologized. But to think that a teacher could say something like that, to say, you know, I agree with the person who loves Hitler, who wants to kill you and all the other Jewish students in the school. Um, and that's just my school. I've, I've also been involved in, like you said, other national organizations, Jewish organizations. And I hear from students across the country about teachers who are being hired from organizations like SJP, Students for Justice in Palestine, who all they do is perpetuate anti-Semitic lies against uh, Israel and Jews. And also students are being bullied and beaten up just on, in high schools, just on the basis of them being Jewish or wearing um, a, a Magen David necklace or just for standing up for Israel. Let me ask you a question, if it's not too personal. You're wearing a kippah right now, is that correct? Uh, yes. Do you wear it at school? Um, personally, I don't wear a kippah. I wear some sort of a hat or other covering. Okay, I'm just curious whether it's immediately, people know that you're Jewish, but I want, okay, just wanted to know, I used to be a journalist. I like to know the little nitty gritty, but here's what I don't understand. And, and here's how I want to help our listeners know what to do. Why your school doesn't do anything? And what does a student who's not you, who's not connected to, so a school like my hometown, where there were very few Jews, what's the, how do they, I don't know, lodge a, a complaint and then go up and keep going until something happens. Could you take us, our listeners through some suggestions of what to do if that happens to you? Um, for the listeners or for high school students? High school students. Yeah, so, um, I, first, I, let, can I talk a little bit about what I've done and then I'll talk Absolutely. more about what I can suggest. Absolutely. So, yeah, well, first I'll say how, um, for instance, in that in that situation where the teacher said Jews or Jewish students cannot participate in their program, um, I and a few other Jewish student leaders on campus met with this teacher and explained to him why, you know, what he's saying doesn't make sense. It gave him a, a, a history lesson explained to him a bit about Israel and Jewish history, and he really just didn't know about what he was talking about. And he changed his decision. And actually, over the past year or so, because I've been, now that he allows Jews in his program, I've been part of this program, and I've sort of um, been becoming friends a little bit with this teacher. And he recently even asked me to speak about anti-Semitism to the group. So, so oftentimes when when we're making we're making real progress for these teachers who are just indifferent and don't know any better and they say stupid things occasionally. Um, but other times when there are smaller incidents um, and we report them to school leadership, they don't really do much. Um, and sometimes with larger incidents like swastikas being graffitied, they might whitewash the situation, like don't mention it's an, it's a, uh, an action of Jew hatred. They simply mention it's um, an action of, of just general hatred. And for these, for these things that seem to get ignored by the school, something that I've done is with the help of my faculty advisor for the Israel Club, we've put together kind of a compilation of all of, of the most notable incidents that seem to have been ignored and presented them to the principal of the school who admitted that she hadn't even heard of many of these things, even though they've been reported. 
So within the administration, they don't reach high enough for them to do anything about it. And she's taking our advice um, in, in possibly bringing Holocaust education for teachers and to, you know, um, make amends with Jewish students on campus. Something else that I'm doing from mostly the student side is a petition for the uh, administration to adopt the IHRA, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, working definition of anti-Semitism, which of course is the framework to uh, identify, define, and, and educate about anti-Semitism. And it'll show that the school stands with Jewish students and it'll be kind of a shield for Jewish students in the future against future acts of anti-Semitism, no matter whether it's committed against a student, um, um, whether it's committed by a student or a teacher or anyone else on campus. Um, and and one other thing that we're doing is within the Jewish clubs and the Israel club, notably, I and other students bring in speakers and we make presentations about Jewish history and Israel and Zionism. And our goal is to train students to become advocates for themselves and for the Jewish people and to master their own history so they can stand up whenever they're confronted with anti-Semitism. Um, and, and to answer your question more specifically, what can other high school students do? I think that um, if you can do uh, like what we're doing at my high school, I think that would be great to show your administration what's really going on. Um, but I think most importantly is that Jewish high school students need to take responsibility because Anti-Semitism is not just about, you know, it's not about the Jews. If you're a Jewish student, it's about you. You need to understand that this is your issue and, and you need to, I think, find the courage to stand up and do uh, anything. Um, and you can even get help from many of the organizations like Stand With Us, SSI, Club Z, uh, and many more who will provide the resources and training and help that you might need. But, but just to do anything about it, you, just to teach yourself, know your own history and facts, become an advocate and stand up for yourself and stand up for the Jewish people. And Joey, how, how many uh, Jews are in your high school? How, what's the percentage of, of students that are Jewish, you think? Um, I don't I don't know exactly, but I estimate between 20 and 30 percent. Wow. Which is, yeah. Yeah. And I just want to remind people when you hear the word, every time you say the word campus, Joe, you have to say to myself, high school. So we're talking high mm -hmm. school, his school. But but let's take it a little farther. Let's say you go to the principal. OK, first of all, there's something important you said that I want to emphasize. You didn't go alone. You look for a team to go with you. And I think for high school students, especially, that's important. Get your allies so that you go together and you show that it. Uh, so I think that's important. But let's say you go to the principal and the principal blows you off. What, from your experience of the different organizations, where would be your next call? Um, well, well, something that I would say is that this seems more of something that happens on the college campus level. I don't, I haven't heard many stories about on high school campuses, anti-Semitism being ignored. Um, but if it were to happen, I would say to kind of model what goes on in the college campuses might be necessary. Something like, um, a lawsuit or or just legal action because it is um, a violation of law to 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 accept discrimination against Jewish students and then there are, again the many organizations out there can help with that that is something that I would say is is helpful um, yes. and also um, also I think to if you want to have a Jewish club or an Israel club or something like that create a pro Jewish climate on your school get your allies and just show your administration or your teachers or whoever it is that you're not alone and people on campus are standing with the Jews. And I think that'll make a big difference as well. Yeah. Um, so you recommended your high school um, to, um, to, to start a, a Holocaust education program, right? Yes. Um, are there other things that you would recommend high schools to do um, what, what they could do against anti-Semitism in their high school? Um, so I think number one is the education, Holocaust education, and also ed education about Jewish history and about Israel, because anti-Zionism is coming more and more into the mainstream every day, and students are just repeating what they hear on social media, free Palestine, from the river to the sea, etc. And to, to really educate students about why, what they're hearing and what they're repeating may not be the full truth and in most cases is not true at all. 
um, that's something that I think would help us tremendously. And 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 yeah, it would it would show that the the school stands with Jewish students and they care about creating an environment where Jews can be connected to their Jewish identity in whatever way necessary, especially in connection with Israel. Can I can I just say one thing here that you've said, but I would like to emphasize it. There are two different groups that need to be educated. We frequently talk about educating students about the Holocaust, but it is really, really important to educate teachers and administrative staff. And that's not talked about as much. That's why I'm thrilled that my hometown of Elgin, Illinois, is doing a teacher's training on January 27th for teachers based on my Holocaust play, because that's where it starts. If the teachers uh, repeat the lies, then how will the students know that this isn't the truth? So I think that we need to emphasize there are two different targets for teaching in high school and colleges, and they may be addressed differently, but they do both have to be addressed. Evelyn? And Joey, were, were there any Jew, uh, non-Jewish allies in your standing up, speaking up against anti-Semitism in your school? Yeah, so so there are definitely non-Jewish allies, um, as you would expect there to be. But it's not it's not the whole student body. But I don't. I'm not sure. I blame them. I don't really. Um, I wouldn't really expect every non-Jewish student to start uh, standing with us. Um, but something that I might add is that in the recent weeks, since someone, um, since the big celebrity Kanye West came out and was um, um, saying the most atrocious anti-Semitic things you could imagine, it's become more people, um, especially non-Jewish people, have become more awakened to the very real um, situation that there is for Jews and anti-Semitism in the world. So I think now that I think uh, because of that, we are getting more allies now, but I have to say that I wish it was more, um, but I am thankful for those who do stand with us um, uh, on the on this matter. Yes. Um, so you already mentioned uh, what, what students can do, <clears throat> Jewish students can do when they face anti-Semitism in high school. Um, an important one is uh, what, what you did yourself was trying to explain to the teacher and explain to the principal what was going on and why it was anti-Semitic and how damaging that can be. Um, and that helped somewhat. Um, and you also mentioned uh, you can find help with organizations that help students who face anti-Semitism on campus, uh, whether it's in college or in high school, uh, organizations like Stand With Us, um, Club Z. Um, <clears throat> Stand With Us even has, it, it has a Holocaust education program, right? If you want to, if you want to um, uh, bring Holocaust education to your school, you could get help from Stand With Us. Um, and you also can get legal support if you think it's necessary to file a lawsuit then uh, Stand With Us can help there as well. Um, question, what can our individual listeners do uh, who are of various age groups and even in various countries? What can our individuals, individual listeners do, you think, against anti-Semitism in high schools? Mm -hmm. um, number one, what I would say is if you know any high school students, I would say first start by talking to them. And something that I... I, I think that you'll find out very quickly is that many Jewish high school students, they have experienced anti-Semitism, but they won't tell you that. They bury it inside. They don't want to talk about the incidents. They'll try to convince themselves that it wasn't an, even an act of anti-Semitism. Even when I talk to my own Jewish peers about incidents that I've heard about, first of all, many times I don't hear about them for a while because the Jewish students keep it inside. But second, when I talk to them, I say, hey, can you tell me more about what happened? Can you maybe write a little bit about that? I'd like to have a record. They say, no, no, I don't want to talk about it. And, and they walk away. They don't, they just don't want to have to deal with it. They don't want to face the reality. And I don't blame them for that. So I think first talk to them. And, and when you do, inspire them to not bear it inside, inspire them to do something about it and to take action on their campus. Um, and, and more in general, though, to all the listeners, I think 
be outspoken and advocate against anti-Semitism and be a model for everyone uh, to stand with the Jewish community. For instance, um, I've spoken to the Los Angeles uh, Unified School District Board of Education about, about um, incorporating more Jewish history into their curriculum. I've spoken to the West Hollywood City Council about passing the IHRA definition, which they unanimously did, and so, same thing with LA City Council. And it shows that that I think what happens in the rest of our society affects obviously what will go on in the high schools. So where um, saying never again, like I said, means taking action and do whatever it is you can to make a difference and that'll affect the high schools. I think that's very important. And the one thing we didn't discuss though that I've suddenly become very interested in is reporting anti-Semitic incidents. I assume that the things that happen at your high school are, don't become part of the national statistics. Is that correct? Is uh, that I, correct? I don't believe they do. So that all these individuals, anti-Semitic incidents are not collected. And one of the reasons that people don't realize the seriousness of the issue. So I think it's incumbent on the Jewish community to figure out a way to collect this information. And for also for people who feel powerless, even if they don't have the courage. They, I was the only Jewish kid in my class. So maybe I wouldn't have had the courage, yes, it was a long time ago, to go to a teacher. But in a school where you are the only Jewish kid, even perhaps being able to assist them to report it makes you feel less powerless. So I think the Jewish community has a great deal to do with helping collect this information and then using it to encourage more education, which is what we're all about. So I wanna thank you so much for coming on, really. Uh, Evelyn and I appreciate this so much. We appreciate our listeners. Oh, I forgot to give you your last chance. What do you want, anything you wanna say, your last chance? Um, I just wanna say, you know, as, as the name of the podcast is, Never Again Is Now, be an advocate and stand up. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. For any of you who have not yet watched Evelyn's documentary, Never Again Is Now, you may see it on Amazon and YouTube. I highly recommend it. You can learn more about Thin Edge of the Wedge at thinedgeofthewedge.com. And as we end every program, we say, without putting yourself in physical harm, speak up against anti-Semitism and